I didn't give back a bike that my cousin gave to me because he thought it was trash. About a month ago I got a free bike off my cousin. An old red beach cruiser of unknown make. I needed a bike because my last one was stolen and I'm too broke to buy a new one. My cousin then told me he had an old beat up bike in his parents backyard, and I could have it if I wanted it. When I picked it up, it looked a mess. Covered in mud, rusty chain, nicked paint, dry cracking on the white sidewalls of the tires. There was even moss on it. But I took it anyway and thanked them. I got it home, cleaned it up, touched up the paint with nail polish, lubed the chain with WD-40, put new $7 grips on it, tightened the rear gear, cleaned most of the rust off any chrome, put on an aluminum kickstand that the bike shop tossed out as garbage, and it became my daily rider. The tubes and tires are still good, and I got it back on the road for less than $10. And honestly I like it. Rides a little bouncy, but the coaster brake is fun and it's simple and reliable. The problem is my cousin saw me riding it last week, and at first didn't recognize it as the same bike. It was so covered in mud previously that he'd thought it was rusted over. And now he says that I scammed him, and that he wants $60 for the bike, or to give it back so he can sell it. I've refused and said he didn't want it in the first place. And I like riding it. He's calling me a jerk and telling his friends and the family I've robbed him. The family are all on my side, including his parents. But his friends think I'm a jerk. But I'm the one who put the work into fixing this bike he gave me free as trash. And I'm the one who actually uses it, unlike my cousin. So I'm here for an unbiased opinion. I'll TA for not giving the bike back or giving money for it? Edit, yes I know WD-40 wasn't a permanent solution for the bike chain. And I will get a proper lube for it later. I only used it for the moment because I already had it on hand, and it loosens rust well because it's made for that. I needed the chain working right away as I was already using the bike to go to work a day later. WD-40 is a stated penetrating lubricant, among other things. It's just not a steady lubricant because it dries out. The chain is working fine for the moment. And I'll get the right kind of grease slash lube soon. My cousin punched me over the bike and got arrested. May 10th, 2023. This is such a mess. Many people here commented about what my cousin would probably do in retaliation. And I was naive about it, because they were exactly right. I last posted on Reddit about my cousin who gave me a junk beach cruiser bike out of his parents' backyard when my mountain bike got stolen. I cleaned up and fixed up the beach cruiser, and then suddenly my cousin wanted me to either pay him $60 for it, or give it back because he wanted to sell it after I made it purdy. But the rest of the family, including his parents, basically told him to grow up when he tried to get them involved. Then he found out about my LTA post. One of his friends apparently saw it and told him. Either here or on a podcast or something, I don't know. But word spread around. The whole family found out because my cousin ranted to them. But none of them are angry with me. They actually sympathized with me for even feeling like I had to make the Ida post to begin with when my cousin was so clearly in the wrong. My cousin ended up freaking out over it, and confronting me on my way home from work. This time he demanded even more money for the bike. He said that since I love Reddit so much, he was taking an a-hole tax for humiliating him. And the cost of the bike was now $80. He ranted about how paying him $80 for the bike was the least I could do after I humiliated him. I refused and said that he was acting like a grifter, and the bike was hardly worth anything. I put in effort to make it rideable, while he let it rot in his parents' backyard for years. It was junk when I started, and I made it work. Then I listed all the things I did to fix it, and how much it would have cost to the bike shop to fix it instead. He somehow still didn't see my point and still stated he wanted the money now, or he'd be taking the bike back whether I liked it or not. I told him I was done with this and tried to ride off. But he grabbed me and pulled both me and the bike over before I could ride away. I said what the hell man. While I was getting up, and then he actually slugged me in the face. It didn't break my nose, but really freaking hurt. And it made me bleed. Then he took my bike and rode off with it. I'm older than my cousin by two years, and taller too. But he's built way sturdier than me since his father is a bit of a husky and strong guy, and he inherited that body type. So he had no problem knocking me down and robbing me. Someone came over to help me up, and then I called the cops. Family or no family, I wasn't about to just let him get away with doing that to me. And the altercation happened right in front of a shop with CCTV. Which the cops later got video from. I got taken to the hospital to have my face checked, and my cousin was arrested by police at his apartment. He had the bike there too, and had even already listed it for sale online. But took it down later. Thanks to something someone commented on my last post, I documented the serial numbers of the bike by photographing them and writing them down at home. So L got my bike back from the police without much issue. My cousin tried to tell police the bike was still his. 
but I had texts on my phone from back when he said I could have it. And lots of other text evidence of the harassment that followed. Plus his parents were there when he gave the bike to me, and the whole family knew he'd tried to grift me. So he surrendered it and the bike was returned to me at the station. My boss gave me a couple days off work to recover. The injury to my nose was thankfully minor. So I'm doing fine. My cousin didn't get off easy though. After he was arrested, he was found to have been drinking. So now he's been charged for theft, assault, and underage drinking since he's not 21 yet. He called his parents to come bail him out, but they refused after finding out what he did to me. They came to see me after a couple days and were extremely apologetic. They said they had no idea he'd do such a jerk move to me. They also said he'd been asking for money a lot lately. And likely was spending that all on his habits. None of us have any idea where he got the alcohol, or what kind of long-term punishment he's in for. But I doubt he's going to get off very lightly from this when he goes to court. I did get questioned about whether or not I can press charges. But the police already have the video of the assault and theft. And my cousin is still getting charged for underage drinking. So no one is really asking me to try and speak on his behalf. I don't really want to either. And since I waited a few days longer to post this, my cousin is now out of jail, and his parents have learned from him that he was also behind on rent, and is now facing eviction since his lease was month to month. He was also fired from his job for being a no-show since he was stuck in jail for a few days. One of my friends works in that same place too, and my cousin had already been on thin ice for bad behavior, a lot of tardiness, and repeatedly not showing up for work. So getting arrested was the last straw for his boss and he was fired. So now he's looking at misdemeanor charges, has no job, and is getting evicted. All because he had to be a jerk and a grifter. From what my parents and his parents tell me, he acted like everything was all my fault. But his parents have shut that down and chewed him out over the fact that he beat me up and stole from me. And this is karma for that. Then they made him promise to leave me alone from here on out. I've heard his parents aren't going to be letting him move back into his old room either. Instead they plan on putting him up in the loft above their garage. Which isn't exactly roomy, has plywood walls, and there's no AC up there for the summer heat. I went back to my routine of riding the bike to and from work, and I haven't been bothered about it anymore by any of my cousin's jerk friends. In fact, they seem to have completely distanced themselves from me and anyone else I know. So none of them made any attempt to apologize. But I don't care since I don't really know them. It's just insane that all this was over a used beach cruiser. It's not even an expensive one. I'd like to ask my cousin one day if it was worth it. But I don't want to see his face again anytime soon. My cousin showed up at my door May 12, 2023. Expected not to post about my cousin again. But he came to bother me one more time yesterday. He saw my last Reddit post, and came pounding on my door. Rather than open it, I spoke to him through my window, just in case he was ready to take another swing at me. I had my phone ready and recording. He started yelling at me about how I've humiliated him, got him arrested, got him fired, and ruined his life. Then he started pounding on my door and demanding I open it so he could kick my ass. I told him he was welcome to try. But I was recording him, and I had a baseball bat ready to use if he tried to break in. So go ahead. Make my day. He chose to back off. But was demanding I take down my Reddit posts. I told him it was too late. He had the option to be civil long ago, and I was done with him. I could care less what his so-called friends think of him. They egged him on to steal the bike from me anyway. A bike he gave to me as junk. It's not valuable just because I fixed it up. Even at the bike shop they said that unless it had new tires put on it, it was only worth about $40. Then my cousin said I should have given him $40 then. I basically said you gotta be kidding me. You're still saying that crap after you got yourself arrested. I should be surprised. But I'm not. I put in the work fixing up that bike on a budget because I was broke. It was worthless when you gave it to me. You didn't make it worth anything. I did. That means its value is to me, not you. But I don't care to debate this with you anymore. You just want money any way you can get it, and I'm done. Go home and don't talk to me again until you decide you actually want to act like an adult. He cussed me out some more, but finally left when I said I was going to call the police if he wasn't gone by the count of five. I decided I'm gonna file for a restraining order. I've spoken with my parents and my cousin's parents. And they all agree it's for the best to keep him away. I've already filed a police report on my cousin for threatening me, and on my next day off I'm going over to the courthouse to file for the row. If my cousin has any brain cells left, he'll know to stay away after getting served. Unless he wants to get even more charges added to his impending court case. His parents also threaten not to let him move into the garage loft if he goes near me again. So hopefully I won't need to post here ever again. 
My cousin went to jail August 18, 2023. Well it's over. My cousin after a lot of convincing, plead guilty since he really couldn't fight any of the charges. He was brought upon theft, assault and battery, underage drinking, and harassment. He was sentenced to a few months in county jail, followed by two years probation, and anger management classes. My cousin acted like he'd gotten so much worse as he was pretty emotional about it. Not exactly crying or angry. Just emotional. That's really the best way I can put it since I was not there to see it. He did originally try to aim for not guilty. But the public defender he got and his parents basically told him he had no chance of fighting the charges because of the clear evidence against him. There was CCTV footage of him attacking and robbing me. Cell phone footage of him showing up at my apartment to try and attack me. Screenshots of the ad he put up of the bike he stole from me. The police report on his being intoxicated from underage drinking. And all of the harassment I got from him and his friends. He really had no choice but to raise a white flag plead guilty, or he'd have possibly gotten a longer sentence. He's sitting in county jail now. And when he gets out, he'll likely go back to living in the loft above his parents' garage. He finally gave up on blaming me since no one sided with him. All of his so-called friends ghosted him too. And he was forced to write out an apology to me by his parents. I did get the restraining order against him. But it's only good for a year. We'll see if his behavior changes and whether or not I'll need to renew it. But I want nothing to do with him for the foreseeable future. I wouldn't say dead to me. But I don't want to speak to him let alone look at his face anytime soon. Other than that, I may as well fill in a few more details. The bike is still riding well. I put slime sealant in the tube since one of them developed a slow leak. I found the spot with the leak, dabbed a drop of super glue onto it, then squirted a generous amount of slime into the tubes. There hasn't been a leak since. And yes, I did get a proper lube for the chain. I also re-greased the crank bearings. Before going to jail, my cousin had a miserable time in that loft above his parents' garage. The summer heat made it very hot up there, and he had no air conditioner. Not that anyone would give him one. So he just had to use several tans. Rumor is he stole a couple of those fans, because they were clearly not new, and just appeared out of nowhere. He was broke, so the family think odds are he didn't buy them. He didn't bother looking for a new job since he knew jail was imminent. And since he's a known thief, I wouldn't doubt it if he prowled around at night taking whatever he could grab. But I'll am not gonna make assumptions. I'll leave that to everyone else. The most ironic thing is my cousin had to either walk or ride his father's bicycle if he wanted to go anywhere. He used to have a motorbike, but had to sell it because he had debts to pay. All his good stuff like his PC, gaming systems, motorbike, furniture, and even some expensive shoes he had all had to be sold. Pretty much anything he had of value was sold either online or in a garage sale. So when he gets out of jail and eventually has to find a job again, he'll have to start from square one. I didn't really have any sympathy for him. He caused all of this to happen after all. His life is gonna be screwed for a long time with jail on his resume too. If you hear nothing from me about my cousin on this site again, then you'll know he's leaving me alone. Update on my bike stealing cousin March 27, 2024. It's been some time since I posted. My gifting bike stealing cousin has been out of jail for a while now, and is serving his two-year probation. Thankfully he hasn't come near me since I still have an active restraining order against him. He has found employment again. He's currently working in construction. I'm told he hates it immensely. But he's got the muscle for that line of work. He's still living in the loft above his parents' garage, and he's still paying back his remaining debts. So he doesn't have a lot of money to his name. His dad had some sympathy though, and picked up a used motor bicycle for him to ride to work. It's just a cheap bike with a cheap engine kit on it from what I heard. I've also heard my cousin went through some nasty stuff in jail, and came out of it with some trauma. I do know he got his ass kicked because of his attitude. But there may be more. Don't know what. I could only guess. One of my friends joked he probably dropped soap or something. Which? EWW. I do not want to think about that. Nor do I want to believe that happens in county jail. But it's not like I've ever been there. My cousin aside from his current job, essentially has no life right now. His employment prospects are going to be screwed for years, due to his record. And while he got what he deserved, None of this would have ever happened if he just left me alone. He's still in anger management classes too. And probably will be for a while because he hasn't shown much improvement. No one has heard him blaming me anymore. He does seem to acknowledge he made his own bed and had to lay in it. I was basically his targeted scapegoat. But a scapegoat is only good if other people back you up about it. And no one backed him. None of his previous friends have gotten back in touch with him either. So when not at work, the most my cousin really does is hide in his loft and play video games. 
As for me, I'm still riding the Red Beach Cruiser. And it's still working fine. Haven't needed to change any tubes or tires, and I try to keep it clean. If anything, I'm kinda anal about its upkeep. I also tend to visit the bike shop from time to time. And they gave me a free used tire with a tube already in it for when I'll eventually need to replace the rear tire on the bike. It is a coaster brake after all. And there is some wear, but not enough to worry about yet. My riding that bike has gotten me a girlfriend though. She rides a beach cruiser too. A blue one. So we connected over a mutual like over the bikes. She also knows about everything my cousin did to me, and actually has problems with her parents being terrible people. We met because she works at a place not far from me, and we live about a mile apart. We've been going on rides together, and with friends. There's even talk of starting a bike club. Happy time for me. My cousin though, not so much. I heard from my uncle that my aunt accidentally let it slip that I got a girlfriend, thanks to the bike, and my cousin went into the loft to have a fit. He probably thinks it is salt in the wound that I'm happy and he's not. But it is what it is. I do sincerely hope he gets better in time. But I don't want to see him any time soon. And I won't hesitate to involve police if he ever comes after me again.